Welcome one and all to Puppet History. Today we'll be taking an ever-winding look at yet another chapter in the heavy, heavy book we call History, while our guests ruthlessly compete for the coveted title of History Master. I'm obviously your beloved host, The Professor. Thank you, hey, Professor. Thank you. Thank you. Ryan Bergara, are you ready? Yeah. Special guest Kate Peterman, are you ready? I am so ready. Then let's crack in. Would you guys like to know what you're playing for? Yeah. yeah oh, sure. yeah. It's the coveted <laughs> cup of the history. Master. Same prize as last time. Cool. Well, I'm excited. <laughs> well, let's get to it. Today's tale is a downright caper. It started out as a simple con and turned into a scandal that would captivate all of France and forever alter the course of history and also be adapted into a movie starring Hilary Swank that I've never seen because they don't let puppets in a movie theater. <laughs> 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 oh my God. Unrelated question, have you guys ever been catfished? Yeah, mm, I thought so, but I, I just was re fully rejected. Is it hot in here? Oh, yeah. it's too personal. Yeah. The place, France, the time, the 1780s. Before this nutty plot unfolds, we need to lay out three of our key players. First up, Jean Lamotte. Born Jean de Valois saint Is her boob out? It's certainly uh, tipping close. She's a... Uh, uh, say it. No, no. I was going to say an unmodest woman. Yeah, whatever. It's fine. I'm not judging. I'm not judging. Yeah. There's no nipple. For the record. <laughs> no, I, yeah, don't look at it, man. Well, I just want to loop this puppet saying nipple. There's no nipple and him staring intently at her breast. There's no nipple. <laughs> I double checked. I thought. I, I don't see it. nothing. <laughs> anyway, she was born in 1756 with a little royalty in her blood as her father was a descendant of an illegitimate son of Henry II. A bastard. French king from way back in the 1500s. Yes, a bastard. Despite her royal blood, uh, by the time Jean was born, her family was really hurting for that sweet, sweet coin. As a child, her parents made her beg on the street, shouting, quote, gentlemen or ladies, take compassion on a poor orphan descended in a direct line from Henry II, King of France. After a rough childhood and plenty of her own adolescent scheming, she eventually settled down with a military man named Nicolas Ooh. de la Motte, who looks exactly like every other French man in the 1700s. But despite his position, and her ongoing claimed royalty, the two were still hard up for cash. We'll check back in on them in just a bit. What did she do for cash as well? Did they, were they dual incoming it? She kind of like schemed her way around. She eventually... Like, well, let's hear about these schemes. I want to hear more about um, these schemes. She goes to the court and she was like, yo, my dad was the illegitimate son of that guy, of, of King Henry II. And they were like, you know what? We're gonna give you some money every month. So that's how she kind of made, you know. So she just went up to officials and said, hey, I know the guy in charge, give me some cash. And they're like, chill. Why yeah, did everybody do that? Well, you would get real beheaded. You're also saying that the very threat of a guillotine was enough to make them think, why would she chance that? Oh yeah, right? mm. I mean, they were using that thing left and right. They were. That they blade really, was dull. That, th <laughs> that blade was dull. On to our second person of interest. Louis de Rohan. Born in 1734 to the distinguished Rohan clan, author Jonathan Beckman describes him as, quote, impeccably polite, with full dark eyes that shone under gently drooping eyelids. Louis charmed everyone he met and accumulated a pantheon of lovers. Kind of uh, sounded a little bit like erotica to me. Yes, I did omit all the yums. All the yums. Yum, yum, yummy. Hamina, hamina, yum, 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 <laughs> he never looks happy. He either looks indifferent or very disappointed and angry. After some time in the circuit, Rohan landed a pretty cushy gig in 1770 as ambassador to Vienna. Ooh. And although he thought the position was below his status, he took it anyway. He quickly gained a reputation in Austria for his wild ass parties where he really ruffled feathers. <gasps> uh oh. Summon your brains. What aspect of Rohan's social gatherings was so controversial? A, his performance of what he called genital origami. B, what? B his risque seating charts. Or C, <laughs> his collection of monkeys. Write yeah. those down. All right, Brian, what'd you put? I'm gonna go with testicle entanglement. And Kate? Same. I You're also gonna go with A. Yeah. Well, it's kind of boring, but... Uh, it's monkeys, isn't it? It's the seating chart. What? 
so normally in oh in, in parties seating chart. I thought you said seating as if like never mind. That guy had something way grosser in my mind. Well, you followed it after. Now I'm explaining myself. Huh? I feel like I have to explain huh? myself. <laughs> what? When you said genital origami, I figured you were upping the ante sexually. So I thought you said seating chart as if he's drawing a chart out of who he's going to. Well, that's what? insane. What? That is absolutely you, insane. You said genital origami. Yeah, you but. Thought, and you said what? what would be, why would you, why you, would be the question? question? Why would you? Well, he had small tables. Is the <laughs> is the answer? Uh, normally at affairs like that, they'd have one big cartoon rich person table, and everybody would kind of be in the order of like, oh, rich people down at this end, poor nobodies down at this end. Mm. But he had a bunch of tiny tables where everyone could mingle. Kind of fun. That's kind of cool. Yeah, and everybody like people got pissed. Pissed drunk? No. One of the people who was not pleased about this was uh, the local head honcho, Holy Roman Empress Maria Teresa who complained about him to anyone who would listen. Rohan, in return, ragged on Maria behind her back. Eventually, the Empress's daughter caught wind of this and got pissed, which could pose some problems for Rohan's political aspirations because her daughter was none other than our third person of interest here today. It's question time. Oh, you thought you were safe, but another question has pounced. Just who in the hell was Maria Teresa's daughter? There is no multiple choice. You must write it down. Guess what my name is. Yeah pulling out the stops with these questions. Brian, answer. I don't even think this person is from that time. <laughs> Antoinette, Marie Antoinette, how do you spell? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, and Kate? Well, I just put, and I probably spelled it wrong too, Maria Teresa the second. Okay. What is it? Well, Ryan gets a point, because it's none other than powdered wig wearing, sheep perfuming, cake eating queen herself, Marie Antoinette. Cake eating queen. Son of a Is bitch, I really want that trophy. Okay. Great question, Doc. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> now we could spend a lot of time unpacking this lady's life, but if you don't know the basics, she was born into Austrian royalty, married off to French royalty at age 14, stepped into queenhood at age 18, and gets a lot of flack because she eventually became a prominent scapegoat during the French Revolution, despite not really being all that bad of a lady. Well, now that we have our three players in mind, let's jump into the Palace of Versailles in the year 1784, when all three parties happen to be present. Worth noting that the the Palace of Versailles was a hive of activity that pretty much anyone could walk around, though people were probably quick to sniff out if you weren't a noble. So Louis de Rohan was now serving on the French court as Grand Almoner, but he was desperate to be Prime Minister and believed that the position was being withheld from him due to Marie Antoinette outright loathing his ass. Jean, in her ongoing quest to cash in on her royal lineage, had moved near Versailles with her husband to Hobnob. Now, Jean had recently been acquainted with Rohan and was aware of the queen's refusal to even speak to him. So, as a person desperate to climb the social ladder, what do you suppose she does with this information when they cross paths at Versailles? A, she blackmails him. B, she tells the queen he's going to assassinate her. Or C, she tells Rohan she's the queen's best friend. Hmm. What to do, what to do? Oh boy, when in doubt, pick C. <laughs> they say about the SAT. What'd you put, Ryan? Well, I put B. You put B. <laughs> I think we know what Kate picked. <laughs> Kate, you picked C. I did. Well, let's find out what happens. Oh boy. What? Costume change. Oh. Yeah. This is the most fun I've had in a really long time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Cardinal Rohan. Fancy seeing you here. Oh, hello, hello. What a... What are you doing around Versailles? Oh, you know, just uh, paying a visit to a friend. Oh, is that so? Uh, 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 and who might that be? Huh? Oh, oh, my friend? Oh, her royal, uh, oh, I mean, uh, oh, just some plain Jane you don't know. Jean, whatever are you playing at? Mm, fine, it's the queen. I'm friends with the queen. The queen is my best friend. And it's, oh. it's the biggest secret in the world. But yes, best friends for life. What more can I say? We're just plain friends. Boo. Boo. Who wrote that? That was a beautiful play. The script sucks. <laughs> I don't like the history. <laughs> I don't like it because I wasn't right. <laughs> when in doubt, pick C. God damn it, the prophecy fulfills itself. Mm. Oh, there he is. So yeah, she uh, lied to him. Yeah. Uh, so Kate gets a point. A history point. Oh, oh. 
So Rohan was uh, obviously not in a position to confirm or deny this. May have sounded outlandish, but since the queen was known to buck tradition, maybe it wasn't. So he ate it up. Rohan was eager to have Jean put in a good word for him, so she offered him a great opportunity. Write the queen a letter. So he did. There's no surviving copy of it, but he likely apologized for dunking on her mom. <laughs> <laughs> and wouldn't you know it, the queen wrote back. Except obviously it was Jean just straight up catfishing him. After exchanging secret letters with the queen for nearly a month without so much as a glance from her, Rohan was getting antsy. He wanted to meet with her and soon. And believe it or not, Jean saw to it on the night of August 12th. Oh, I hope there's disguises, please. Wait, wait. What? what? At this point, do, do they know? What? What do you want? The person here who's being catfished, does he know what the- Rohan? Yeah. Does Jean look strikingly similar to the queen? Not particularly. Mm. I mean, Rohan is much more acquainted with Jean than with the queen. So where were we? August 12th. Here we go! <laughs> <laughs> the sprawling gardens of Versailles on a starlit night. Enter sneakily, Rohan. Whoop. It's me, the Rohan, standing alone in the garden. Chillin' hard. Sure would be a shock if any queens appeared here tonight. Crickets. Mm. I knew it. What a pile of nuts. Suddenly, from the bushes, a rustling. And who should emerge? Who goes there? I'll kill you. <gasps> Gasp. Ma, 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 ma. My queen. Wha, 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 wha. What? She extends a letter. You know what this means. No, I don't. I have to go now, goodbye. Oh? What? What'd the letter say? Was she a ghost? Ah, okay, weird. What do you think just happened? A, Jean donned a powdery wig and a Jedi robe and pretended to be Marie Antoinette. B, Jean hired her husband's mistress to pretend to be Marie Antoinette. Oh. Or C, this is fan fiction written by Rohan in his memoirs. Oh. My God. That's tough. Rohan did talk a lot of shit, so I wouldn't put it past him to say that he met the queen, but he didn't meet the queen, yeah, yeah. you know? Sure, sure. But he did, had no reason to lie about it because he thought he was getting actual letters from the queen. He did. So it kind of feels like maybe it was the mistress, but why would she hire her husband's mistress? Well, I guess you'll have to pick one. Mm. Oh yeah, I guess we don't, can't just sit around <laughs> yeah. here talking about it all day. <laughs> Ryan, have you chosen? I think I have. What are you gonna go with? I think this is fanfic. Okay, Kate. Oh God, I went with Master of Disguise. I went with A. I hope okay. it's A. I All think right. it's C. Well, it turns out Jean's husband was getting a little love on the side with a woman who very much resembled Marie Antoinette. So without telling her much, they dolled her up and had her act the part. Points to no one. Do you think Rohan bought it? Yes. Yeah, I think so too. He bought the hell out of it. Yeah, I'm sure he did. To such a degree that he didn't even bat an eye when the queen wrote him asking to donate 60,000 pounds to a family in need. Or a few months later, when the queen also asked him for an additional 100,000 pounds. Coincidentally, Jean bought a nice house for her and her husband around this time. So Jean just starts sending him a bunch of letters being like, it's me, the queen. Hey, I need money. Yo, and he's like, I love all right. Jean. She does rule, that's pretty great. God that is so freaking cool. She was all business. She didn't care about her husband having a little mistress. She no, was she like, was I'm like, we use... can use this. Yeah, I'm we can work with this. a veranda. Now with Rohan firmly on the hook, it was time for Jean to really crank them screws. And here's where the world's most expensive necklace comes into play. According to Jonathan Beckman, quote, the necklace comprised 647 diamonds weighing 2,800 carats. Grotesque and almost literally unbearable, it resembled an item of chain mail more than a coveted piece of jewelry. The necklace had been commissioned as a gift by former King Louis XV, but as it was such a monstrosity, the jewelers, known as the Beaumaires, weren't able to finish the thing before he kicked the bucket in 1774. Desperate to sell the necklace that most people short of royalty probably could never afford, they had previously offered the sale to Marie Antoinette. Beckman describes their exchange, and for once, this scene will have some allegedly accurate dialogue. Now we did not like the dialogue from the other scenes. Uh, speak for yourself. You thought it was good? I did. Thank you. You're welcome. Don't be so needy. In the palace of Versailles, a sweating jeweler falls to his knees in front of Marie Antoinette. Oh, 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 oh. Jesus Christ. 
Madame, I am ruined and disgraced if you do not purchase my necklace. I cannot outlive so many misfortunes. When I leave here, I shall throw myself into the river. Rise, Beaumare. I do not like these rhapsodies. If you were to kill yourself, I should regret... <coughs> if you were to kill yourself, I should regret it as the act of a madman in whom I have taken an interest, but I would not hold myself responsible. I told you in person Ooh. that I refused to buy the necklace. The king wished to give it to me, but I refused him also. Never mention it again to me. Divide it and try to sell it piecemeal, and do not drown yourself. Never let me see you behave in this way again. Go. Whoa, dope. Yo, man. She freaking <laughs> knows how to instill boundaries. Well, she also just sunned him hard. She was like, no, bitch, fix it. You're in this situation, fix it. She ain't gonna fall for this crocodile and you, tears. If you kill yourself, it's not my fault. <laughs> Yo, what a power play. Not falling wow. for the crocodile tears. A respectable tears. lady. Wow. Yeah, it was good. Somewhat unsurprising, based on that exchange, that in January of 1785, Rohan received yet another letter from the queen and she wanted the necklace. But for reasons undisclosed, she preferred Rohan to take care of the transaction. And look, we're not here to pick on the guy, but Rohan is really turning out to be quite the chump here. Assuming the queen was maybe just hiding this transaction from the king, Rohan happily agreed to broker the deal with the delighted jewelers. A price was agreed upon, 1.6 million pounds, paid over time with an initial payment of 400,000 pounds within the first six months. Days later, Rohan finalized the sale with the jewelers and chauffeured the necklace from Paris to the Lamotte's resident at Versailles. Question. <laughs> What happens next? A. Rohan is ambushed and robbed on the street by a cohort of jeans. B. Rohan insists on taking the necklace directly to the queen. Or C. Rohan hands the necklace to a man he's never met before. <laughs> Guys, just pick one. It's okay. No, All right, I want to win. It's just history points. I, I'm locked in, Doc. All right. Let's go with A. You're just, going with A. Just to continue the chumpness, the most chumpy thing I could think of is going to make this deal where you're already getting ripped off sure. and to get robbed by that person in the street just for funsies. And Kate? I'm going with B. You're going with B. That was my second choice. He insists on taking the <laughs> necklace directly to the queen. Yeah, I think he did. Well, let's find out what happened. <gasps> <laughs> Jesus. Whew. Genie baby, you've really nailed it. Mama's hit the big time. A rapping at the door. Uh, 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 come on in. Oh, Rohan. Hello. Wait. Huh? That's Marie. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Let me take this from the top, huh? <laughs> A rapping at the door. Oh, uh, come on in. Oh, Rohan. Hello. What timing. I was just meditating on my very cool, very real friendship with uh, Marie Antoinette. Hey, where's that necklace? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Here it is, the dreadful thing. Oh, I can't wait to sell this thing. What was that? I can't wait to tell the queen what a champ you've been. Oh, bless your wonderful, honest heart. A rapping at the door. Uh, whoa, well, that'll be the queen's necklace fetcher. Be a treat and hide behind that uh, potted plant over there. Mm, that sounds reasonable. <laughs> so Rohan actually let a complete stranger just walk off with what may be the most expensive pile of rocks known to man. You never gave me my point. Huh? You never gave me my point. Nobody gets a point. You it both got C. it wrong. Remember when I said that when in doubt, put C, and then yeah. I didn't? <laughs> my brain is melting right now. God damn it, this time, SAT's Peterman. all over again. <laughs> so Rohan actually let a complete stranger just walk off with what may be the most expensive pile of rocks known to man. And Jean bought herself even more time by telling him that the queen probably wouldn't wear the necklace till she summoned the courage to tell King Louis about it. Wow. Smart. Mm. Just plain smart. She is Joanne the Scammer. It's good. Yeah. Obviously, Jean and her husband immediately dismantled the necklace, and he went to Paris to sell the stones at a loss for 240,000 pounds. That's it? Yeah. No, I feel like he pocketed some. Also, you got to understand, he took it to several jewelers, and most of them, it's like, it would be like trying to sell someone a stealth jet. They were like, why yeah. on earth would anyone be trying to sell yeah. this pile of millions Rubies. of dollars of diamonds? In case you have to sneak around. So despite his overly trusting nature, Rohan was getting nervous the queen had yet to wear the necklace. The jewelers were also getting nervous, and on the 5th of August, Beaumare went directly to the queen, and in meeting with her, laid out the details of the transaction. And guess what? She was pissed. That was the 5th of August. On the 6th of August, at 2 in the morning, Jean Lamont left town 
Days later, at the Queen's patronal feast, Rohan was tapped on the shoulder by the King's guards. He'd long suspected he was being duped, but only now realized the extent of it. According to Beckman, when put before the King and Queen and asked about the necklace, he sheepishly uttered, It is true, sire. I have been tricked. That's so sad. <laughs> so they rubbed his face in the poop, just yeah. like you would with a newborn puppy. Yeah. That's well, amazing. Isn't it? What? Rohan was said to be visibly shaking, and after the conversation, he begged them to spare him the shame and scandal of being publicly arrested. He was publicly arrested. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, Rohan had just enough time to slip his servant a note instructing him to ride to Paris as fast as he could and burn all his documents. His servant took him seriously and rode so fast and so hard that oh, his horse, horse died, died as soon as he arrived in Paris. You know, the horses are always the unsung heroes They're, of most of these stories. And it's they like, are suffering. Yeah. <laughs> You ever think about a horses on the battlefield just getting peppered by bullets and all muskets? All the frickin' time, I think about it all the time. But you gotta think those horses, when they're all like lined up at battle, they're thinking, this is sick. Like, I'm here no, with all my bros. No, they're good at, I was a horse girl. There, I said it, I was. That's fine. That's a love strong horses. admission, yeah. The key word there I is was. I still love horses. Uh-oh. I don't like have stickers of them in my Relapse. apartment because <laughs> I can't put stickers on my wall. Sure. But I do love horses, but they're very intuitive. If they were really intuitive, wouldn't they just be like, no, I'm not running then. I'm gonna oh, go yeah. back to the barn. Well, they get branded and shit. How about give me some hay? <laughs> Maybe a sweet little apple covered in sugar. Hey buddy, how about an apple before I run into that mm. hail of bullets? God, I love sugar cubes. I got a lot to think about. Meanwhile, in Clairvaux, 150 miles east of Versailles, Jean was also casually setting things on fire, according to her memoirs, and she's very chill about this. She said, quote, Having received intelligence that the Cardinal was in the Bastille, I employed myself near two hours in burning all the letters and notes which I then recollected to have in my possession between the Queen and the Cardinal. In short, I thought it my duty to remove all vestiges of a correspondence between the Cardinal and the Queen. Whoa. So yeah. even she's thinking about her legacy, even yeah. in the future. It wasn't enough that she accomplished the crime. Exactly. Little revisionist. That's pretty cool, actually. Yeah. I really like her. She's covering her bases. I just she's baller. feel like she did a great job. She did a great job. I feel like she should take that money, hop a boat, get out of there, start a new life with all that stolen money. Well, sure. not stolen. Well, yeah, no. That I mean, was stolen. Well, yeah. That was 100% yeah, she stole yeah, my yeah. bad. Yeah. <laughs> so she was arrested the following day and would now join Rohan in the cells of the Bastille as they awaited trial. It started out as a grift. How did it end up like this? <laughs> it was only a grift. It was only a grift. The formal investigation began a few months later in January, and it lasted for months. The trial itself became a national obsession, and it's as long and as fascinating as the caper that caused it. However, we simply don't have time to cover it in detail, or at least the detail it deserves. So, you know, read some books about it. All right, don't give me a homework assignment, bud. No, I am the professor. With no accreditation. I went to Puppet U. Oh, oh yeah? Yeah, I'm <laughs> a PU about? alum. PU? Question time! How do you think things turned out for these two banana heads? A. Both were sentenced to death. B. Jean pinned it all on Rohan. Or C. Jean's story crumbled like a house of cards. All right. Brian, what do you got? I'm gonna go with C. It all fell apart. I think it all fell apart. You did mention she's in jail, so I'm gonna... Well, she was in jail awaiting trial. Whoops. Mm -hmm. I went with B. You I think she pinned it all on Rohan. In the end, Rohan revealed several holes in Jean's story, unmasking her as the mastermind behind the outlandish plot. Jean was sentenced to whipping, branding, and imprisonment. Rohan was sentenced to apologize to the queen, resign from his various positions, and was henceforth banned from Versailles when the royal couple was in residence. <laughs> Pretty light. So he could only not be in the city when they're there. <laughs> yeah, if they show up, he's gotta be like, ooh, goodbye. <laughs> so it was C. It was C? It was C. Point point for Ryan. History point for Ryan. Is that the end of the well, question? Lots of fanfare to that. <laughs> no, there may be one more question, who knows. So I guess it was C here. Yeah. Well, Rohan would leave the Bastille to cheering crowds as the public came to view him as an unwitting victim in the whole messy plot which he kind of was. As for the queen, her reputation was permanently sullied by the whole thing, with commoners swapping conspiracy theories about her actual involvement in the whole plot. Did she actually buy the necklace and pin it on these rubes? Was it all a plot to get back at Rohan? This was sort of the first instance of the public losing faith in Marie Antoinette. And Whoa. you know, eventually they
they would uh, have that old French Revolution and behead her. That must have been oh, that's right, I forgot such that. an ugly necklace. No, I think it was beautiful, but they just couldn't wear it. I mean, Louis the Fifteenth commissioned it, so maybe it was more his style. It did say it had it like, like shallot-sized diamonds on it, which... I'd wear it. As for Jean, that scrappy schemer with a drop of nobility in her blood chasing after her dream through nefarious means only to end up in the slammer. Well, let's have one last shot at history points here. Whatever happened to Jean Lamont? A, she parted ways with her own head via guillotine. B, <laughs> she escaped prison by dressing up as a boy. Or C, she fell down a well in the prison yard. Oh, boy, oh. God, dang it. Don't kill, don't hurt yourself. Ryan, what's it gonna be? I'm gonna go with A, seeing as she was a commoner. I don't think they're gonna take what she did lightly. And uh, Kate? I put B, she escaped as a boy. But I think it was C, but I didn't write that. I would love for it to be C. Point to Kate, she <gasps> dressed up as a boy and escaped to prison. Wait, yeah. what? <laughs> Can you believe it? I can't believe that. That's insane. Yeah. I, didn't, I thought there was no chance that one was right. Yeah. Just kind of. A lot of people think that maybe she did have friends in high places who, after the whole thing played out, felt kind of bad for her and arranged for her to be able to escape. But once she escaped, they never really bothered to haul her back in. So she kind of had a bit of a happy ending. Wrote a huge memoir that was bestseller. Pretty much everyone in this story wrote their own memoir. Sick. Uh, and told their story of the event. Uh. Um, so it was crazy. That concludes our history lesson. I'm going to go tally up the scores to see who receives the coveted cup and the title of history master. While I do that, please enjoy this special performance from, oh, it's the infamous diamond necklace. Oh, God. What? All right. I'm so excited. Hey, everyone. <laughs> it's me. You gotta be kidding me. The pile of diamonds. <laughs> yeah, it's me. That big pile of diamonds. Well, I'm that pricey ice. Oh, but I look so nice around that neck. Marie Antoinette, she didn't want me. She told me to my face that I was ugly. But I guess in the end, I got the upper hand because they didn't cut my head off. And sure, they hacked me into tiny pieces. It was a devastating thing for all my nieces. And yes, necklaces can have nieces. When the anthropomorphic, when the I was just a pile of jewels. Made Rohan look like a fool. But I bet I should know better than to trust a simple letter. So I guess if there's a lesson to this whole backstabbing mess and it's that if you think you know the queen to make sure that you know the queen like has she ever talked to you or looked at you or smiled at you or even seemed to think of you or met you in the daytime maybe ask her for a license or to pose a two-day paper and if she doesn't want to then my dude i think it ain't her this is actually not that bad this is so good this is actually not that bad Oh my god a stack of diamonds has bars truly wow that guy was really good yeah what a songwriter. Yeah. Don't compliment yourself, huh? you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see how we did uh, tallying up the scores. Ryan and Kate, you both made it out with two history points. It's a tie. Is there no sudden death? No, there's no sudden death. You share it. You could have it, Ryan. We could just hold it like this. Is it full of jelly beans? Yeah. It is. They're actually pretty good. Sure it is. I love jelly beans. I know. <laughs> Thanks for watching Puppet History, everybody. We'll see you next time. Oh, I got a root beer one. Oh, Kate, oh. thank you for, for being here. Oh, I had so much fun. Goodbye. Goodbye. I learned so much. <laughs>